Hey guys, welcome to another Unity 5 tutorial today, and this is going to be showing you how to create a simple countdown timer within Unity. Now, I did show this in the past, but it wasn't always the best optimized way, and you got a lot of calls in the update function, so I'm just going over this for people who might be new, or people who want to, you know, learn the bits about making sure that it's nicely optimized and ready for you to use. So you can see my example here, I've got an image, which has got the uh, text UI above it, and I've got a button. Now we've got a countdown timer script and we can set the amount of time that we're going to count down. Now I've currently set it to 5 and when I press play it will count down to 0. Now this is all well and good, it's counting down all the way to 0 as we expect. And then it'll get to 0 and that's all and fine, we can press the button and this could be our reset button and you know we could do this. And the functionality of the reset button doesn't have to be an actual button, it could just do the same functionality when you restart your scene. Whether you restart the actual scene or not. But this is just the concept in itself. So what I'm going to go with to start with is if you've got a new scene here, what you can do is you can right click on the hierarchy and create a new canvas. So what we can do is you could go right click UI and create an image, let's say, and it will create the canvas and we'll create an image. With this, what we'll do is we'll just scale it out a little bit so we get a sort of, you know, more of a rectangle than anything else. And then, and then I will just pay, place it roughly in the middle. Then what we can do is click on the canvas, right click the canvas, go UI and select text. And we'll get text over this actual image in itself. Now, what we can do is on the UI text over this side, we can just rename this to countdown just to make it easier so we understand what's going on. So we're going to then align this to the center and then put it in the middle. And we can align this using the lines in the uh, in the UI to help us out. You could potentially scale it up if you like, but we'll leave it like this for now. What we can also do is right click, go UI and create a button. And we can use that for later when we need it. So we have everything now. We have the countdown and just some things going on. So now we need to create the script. So we'll right click in that project panel, go create and we'll choose C sharp and we'll call this and we'll call this countdown script. We'll open up in Visual Studio. What I'll do is I'll get rid of the two starting functions. So we're in our beginning here. So what we want to be able to do is we need to start by using the collections for the UI so we can actually access the UI. So at the top, we want to say using unity engine.ui. Then we can save that. We can move down back into our initial class and we can choose to make a few variables to reference what we're going to be able to use. So I'm going to put in square brackets serialize field because I want to just make these private variables that I'm going to make visible in the inspector. Now I will add make a private variable call this text and now we can use this text because we're using the UI and then call this UI text with a semicolon and I'm just going to place this next to the serialized field to keep it nicely ordered. We're going to have another serialized field because it's going to be another private variable that we want to see but we don't need to make it public. It's going to be flow and this is going to be our main timer that we're going to use. So this is the thing that we're going to set in the inspector and say, you know, this is how many seconds we want to count down. Then we're going to create three just private variables by themselves because they don't need to be actually in the inspector. And we can just have that as private float timer. So this is going to be the thing that we're actually going to count down because we're not going to count down the main timer because that's the thing that we want to specify what the maximum amount is if we restart it. Then we'll write another private um, bool can account and we'll set that equal to false and I'll show you what these mean as we go along. I'll have another private bool called do once set that equal to false. I'll actually change the one at the top to true and like I said I'll explain as I go along. What we could do is save this out. We'll start by writing a void update and then add two brackets and two curly brackets below that. We'll first by saying that if the timer is below a certain value then we want to count down and we want to update the UI element that we've got. What we can say is that if the timer, not main timer, just the timer that we've currently got, is greater than or equal to 0.0f, so if it's greater than 0, but because we're using floats we need to take into account of decimal places, and and can count by itself, which means if also can count is equal to true, which it is when we start, because you can see can count, can count is equal to true at the beginning. So then we'll want to say that timer minus equals time dot delta time with a semicolon. So what this means is that the timer will count down in delta time based on the seconds we have since the last frame. So it'll just count down in a nicely order, which is frame rate independent. Then what we'll do is we'll say that UI text, which we created the variable up here, 
Then we'll say dot text to access the text component on the UI. And we'll say that timer, which is the one that we're going to count down, dot to string, and then we'll open up the brackets in quotes, we'll write F and put a semicolon on the end. And what that means is that timer is a float value, but the text element is a string and a string is a word and a float is a number. Now you can't just shove um, a number into a string without first converting it. So we're converting the timer to a string and the F just corresponds to creating that string into a float value. So it's just the functionality behind it there. Then what we're going to do is if we reach a certain value, we're going to do something else. So we'll say that else if timer is less than or equal to 0.0 F and and I'll put as an exclamation mark do once then below here we'll add two curly brackets what this means is that if the timer ever goes below zero and do once is equal to false which the exclamation mark means do the exact opposite then we'll say that can count is equal to false do once is equal to true then we'll also say that ui text dot text is then equal to 0, 0.00 in quotes with a semicolon and that timer then will equal 0, 0.0 f with a semicolon so what this means is that when the timer reaches zero and do once is equal to false which it is at the start so when it reaches zero and it's false at the start we'll say that can count is equal to false so we're not counting down anymore because it's not greater than zero and we can't count anymore so it's not going to do any of that do once is equal to true so it's only going to do this once once it reaches it it's going to set the ui to zero and it's also going to set the timer to zero so we, we've just got everything on an even keel so it just means that these booleans just control whether we can do it or for this case just do it once so we don't in an update function it'll do it every so many times every frame we don't need it to do that if we don't want it to because it's just a waste and then that's pretty much it for this we'll save it out what we can do in the hierarchy here is we can right click empty create an empty we can right click over on this side on the inspector and just reset the transform values we'll rename this to let's say timer controller then what I'll do is I'll add the countdown script to there. You can see it here. You can see the UI text and you can see the main timer. I'll set the main timer to five and then I'll add the UI text here. And one last thing we need to do up here is that we'll create a void start because we need to actually specify what things are going to be equal to. So we need to say that timer equals main timer every time we start. What this means is that the timer has no value at the beginning main value main timer does have a value because we set it in the inspector so all we're saying is that timer because that's going to be the thing that counts down is going to be equal to what we set in the inspector now because we've added main timer we've added this because when we reset the button uh, when we press the reset button we need to actually uh, reset this rather than this one so what we could do is if we go back into unity you can so you can see when we're back in unity i'll press play and you can see it counting down from five and you'll see it hit zero and our button currently doesn't do anything. Now, to make this functionality work, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create ourselves our own um, public method. So just to control what the button does, so we'll say public void reset btn, two brackets, then two curly brackets below. And then we'll say that timer equals main timer with a semicolon like we did in the start function. Then we'll say can count is equal to true and also do once is then equal to false. What you could also write in this else if statement is that when we hit zero, you can restart the scene, you can show a game over, whatever you need to do in that respect. So when we go back to Unity, what we can do is we can go to the button here on this side. We can actually click the little plus box on the onclick event and we can add the timer controller to it. Then we can select no function, go down to the countdown script, and we can choose the public method, which was called reset button. And then once we do that, it will, every time we click it, we'll do that same functionality. So I'll press play, it'll be counting down to five, and then this button is going to be our reset button. When we press play, it resets it, and we can reset it at any time if we so wish. You can obviously control different things. You can increase the timer just in general, and you can see that it goes all the way from that. And we can do the same thing, just reset it every time. 
Now, like I said, you could create your own and we could just call this. We could uh, call this something like game over with two brackets and a semicolon. And what we're going to do is we're going to call our wrong function called void game over. And it could be something like this. And then every time it hits zero, we're going to call this game over function. And what's this going to do? It's going to maybe load a new scene whatever we need it to do at that point. So all we're doing with this countdown is we're updating the UI, updating a timer, creating a couple of booleans so we don't have to do these checks uh, every single time because we don't need to if we you know, don't need to be doing it any one time. Then we create a simple button to just reset the boolean so we can start doing it again because the update function will always be checking um, this statement and this statement if this one isn't true. It won't have to run through any of these extra lines if these are not the values that it expects to have. So hopefully this helped you out just creating a simple sort of countdown timer and helping you understand some of the basics of the things that you can do there and using the basics of the Unity UI. So thanks again for watching. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Cheers.